The first casualty of war is the truth. And if the American people knew the truth about U.S. interference in Ukraine, they might not be so eager to start World War III. During World War II, Western Ukraine sided with the Nazis. After the war, the CIA helped Ukrainian Nazis evade the Nuremberg trials and began operating with them within the Ukraine. After decades of CIA infiltration, the Ukrainian People's Movement emerged in 1989 and gave birth to extremist groups Svoboda, Trident, and Right Sector. Neo-Nazi groups pushing for the ethnic cleansing of Ukraine. Extremist groups cultivated by the CIA, supported by the U.S. State Department, and used by the IMF to bring Ukraine to heel. When Yinyakovic beat NATO-backed Yushchenko in the 2010 elections, his government was being pressured into signing an EU association agreement by the International Monetary Fund in their typical conquer-by-debt offer that would financially ruin the Ukraine and place them at the mercy of the World Bank. Yinyakovic declined their offer. And in today's corrupt world, you're not allowed to say no to the IMF. Funded by Western NGOs associated with George Soros and the CIA, a highly organized color revolution was immediately deployed against Yinyakovic. Organizations such as the National Endowment for Democracy trained activist journalists to utilize Facebook along with three brand new television networks created within weeks to recruit people for the protests. This Western run media campaign was a huge success. The turnout was massive. The CIA has been orchestrating revolutions their entire career, and the first step to their simple formula is to convince people to take to the streets in peaceful protest. They then use agitators to goad the police into violence and state-run media to ignite the crowd with emotionally charged reports of sacred victims. On November 30th, 2013, the Ukrainian chief of staff, associated closely with the U.S. State Department, ordered the streets to be cleared of protesters for the erection of the annual Christmas tree. When the police arrived, they were met by a highly aggressive and well-organized faction of Ukraine's right sector, who provoked the police into a violent reaction against peaceful protesters, which is all the Western intelligence media reported on. Predictably, this resulted in more unrest and violence, which was further fueled by U.S. Senator John McCain's support of the protests. Leaked phone calls reveal that the U.S. State Department was orchestrating this coup d'etat from within the U.S. Embassy with support from Vice President Joe Biden. On February 20th, unidentified snipers firing from government buildings occupied by the protesters began firing into the crowd, killing people on all sides. Yinyakovic's home and offices were taken by armed mobs and a new government was put into place with a neo-Nazi element that went on to accept the IMF's spurious loan offer and began murdering the Russian-speaking population of Ukraine in Donbass. As a result of this Western-created quagmire, 96% of the people in Crimea voted in favor of joining Russia. And while the nation celebrated, Western media reported that they were invaded by Russia. Their proof? a Russian military presence which has existed there since 1804. Supporting a criminal war against Russia does not make you a patriot. It makes you a useful idiot of the globalist banking cartel, the very same entities waging war on all of humanity with vaccine passports and experimental jabs. A righteous patriot would call out his government for war crimes and through fraud and deceit, the United States government has been the world's biggest purveyor of war crimes for decades, all in the name of spreading McDonald's, genetically modified foods, and sexual perversions worldwide. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese.